On Saturday, October 11th, I visited my ancient high school friend Ed Goldberg in Boca Raton. I was accompanied by my 12-year-old grandson, Connor. Connor was there to obtain a basketball lesson from the former legend himself. Because I didn't have my boom mic and a lapel mic would not do given all the activity involved, I had to go with my internal speakers. They were inadequate, so I had to resort to voiceover whenever necessary. I would be remiss, however, if I didn't thank you, Ed, for doing such a great job coaching my grandson while congratulating you for having the good taste and good fortune to win a sweet lady like Vani. Thanks also for being such a good friend. Well, let's get on with it, shall we? When I was in high school, I played guard next to Ed Goldberg, the best I ever played with or against. I was amazed at how easily he passed his defensive man on a drive to the basket. He was always able to get open for a layup or an unobstructed jump shot. He had a deadly set shot, but now with the three-point play, that shot is a thing of the past. However, today, he would have taken the jump shot from the three-point perimeter with equal accuracy. Recently, he told me of an NBA player who coached him while at basketball camp on what I call the move, which enabled Ed to consistently drive past his opponents. He later taught this move to his brother Billy, pictured in front here, also who became a star player capitalizing on the move's effectiveness. Billy told Ed he tried to teach this move to others, most of whom were unable to master some of its concepts or lacked the physical prowess or dedication needed to make it work. The move requires quickness, excellent body control, and what I call the feel or knowing the moment when you have your man beat enabling the player to cash in on what the defense leaves open. Finally, without dedication and a lot of practice, a good result will always be out of reach. While attending a game at Madison Square Garden in the 50s, Ed was playing guard for Syracuse University. He was their star player and leading scorer. I saw him do something that truly set him apart from other players. His man was guarding him closely and Ed drove for the basket. The defensive player was quick and stayed with Ed, until he stopped on a dime, went up for the jump shot, and drilled it. The defensive player, unable to control his momentum, had traveled two further steps before he could recover. Ed, by that time, had already turned and was moving to the other side of the court. That is an athletic ability few can master. He scored 25 points that night. But let's concentrate on what can be mastered by a player possessing better than average ability that is dedicated, and I emphasize dedicated. Okay, so here's the thing. What I'm going to try to do, hopefully we can do, is I would like to show Connors a, 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 a move, a three-phased move. And I'm going to start with the first phase, take it to the second phase, and then show them the third phase. The third phase, which is critical, but they're integrated. And you're going to see if you video this, the way my feet move, even though I can't move them anymore, and the way his feet move. And then he'll be able to see what he has to practice doing. This seems as good a place as any to start. Let's break these moves down. Ed fakes right, then goes left twice. Then Ed fakes in a way he wants to be as real as if he is actually going to follow through full board of the basket. A good fake has to be sold to be effective. Usually the defensive player will move back with his left leg when Ed fakes to his right, putting himself between his man and the basket. Okay, Ed has passed his man twice, once to the right, the second time to the left, but not necessarily in that order. His man is beginning to realize he has a real challenge on his hands. Seeing two fakes to the right, then going left, Connor tries to anticipate what Ed is going to do. Here we see Connor taking the bait as Ed makes a subtle move to his left after faking to his right. Look at Connor's right foot. Ed, seeing and sensing his man has moved right, pushes off powerfully with his pivot foot and drives forward on a direct line to the basket and easy too. Connor fakes right and goes left. Connor, after several tries, properly demonstrates the move by faking left, hesitating, and exploding to his right and passing Ed to the basket. 
Here Ed demonstrates the proper position after making the first fake. Remember, the fake must be as real as if you are intending to go to the basket to be effective, because it just might be that an opening will occur, in which case you will take advantage and move ahead with the dribble. After taking the step with your action leg, you and the ball should be low to the ground, the ball held away from the defensive player. If you find your shoulder is parallel with the defensive player's chest, you have your man beaten, and the explosion to the basket can proceed without going to another fake. Here is LeBron James in a similar demonstration, verifying that Ed's approach still applies today. One key thing that you have to do is get your shoulder lower, and LeBron does a good job of doing that. We'll take another look at it. You see here he gets his shoulder lower than Carmelo's shoulder. Carmelo doesn't stand a chance because one, he's standing straight up, and, and the next thing, LeBron is lower. His shoulder is lower than his. LeBron does a great job, man, at getting his shoulder lower on all his drives. His shoulder is always low. He always goes in a straight line. You want to make sure you go in a straight line when you drive him to the basket. That's the fastest way to any point is a straight line. So you see it again. He stays low. He gets his shoulder lower than, than Carmelo's shoulder. But then he goes in a straight line. The other thing that, that players, they do those two, they get their shoulder low, and they, and they go in a straight line. But one thing they, they forget is once you start your move and you're low, you have to remain low. You have to stay low. LeBron even gets lower. You see there he dips a little bit. He even gets lower as he goes in his drop. It tells Connor to be aware of how his defensive man is playing him at all times. If he is playing off you and you are within range for the shot, Take it from where you are. If not, you are set up for a quick move to the basket, stop abruptly, and go up with a jump shot. The audio going forward is a little better, so I will turn this over to Ed as he goes through some other elements of the move. Thank 
form, you had it to dribble, so you have control of the situation. You can decide where you want it. Okay, thank you. You got me back a little? See, I was back the second time and went the other way. Now it's here. Play with me. Makes me look like an idiot. Did you see that little hesitation step? Did you like What's that? that? Did you see that little hesitation I step? did. And, and see and where he moved his head? Like he was going to go that way and then he yeah. went that way? Let me ask you a When you make that first move, where does your foot go? Way out. Where's your body? You're getting down? You're getting down so you're... And the ball's where? Okay. Now put it down. Now, now stay there. Kiss me right. Now, 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 now switch over and go this way. Now go back the other way. Now go this way. Now go this way. Now go this way. Now go. Keep my hand. Keep me. Keep me. Keep me. Go! That was good. And you know what you did? You know what the best thing you did? You know the best thing you did? You know when you made that move? You made the fake me. I went back. As I came forward, you caught me. You made your move, so you caught me off bound. <coughs> so, so that's that was that time you caught me. While no, you're going forward, I'm that way. See, look, if you give me a, if that's what I say. If you give me a kicking ass fake. It, it means that you're going like I mean, it's like I'm in a place. I'll give you a fake. You ready? Yeah. I'll give you a fake. I'm going. I'll go. That's a fake. I'm going. Grandpa and I, think so yeah, I thought Grandpa was exaggerating about how good he was. You thought what? I thought, was, I thought you were exaggerating about how good he was. I'm only 75. Oh, no. Are you kidding? Now, look, he's 75 years old. I can't do this anymore. This is killing my life. But I'm trying to say, I don't want you to make moves like this. You've got to get into this thing. you got to say, I'm going to drive practice. So when you hit this here, the ball is here. When you hit this here, the ball is here. All right, let's recap. Number one, get low. Two, extend the first dribble. Three, Get maximum push off your pivot foot using your calf muscles. Four, perfect the hesitation and the hesitation fake. Here are some things to look for. If the defensive player goes way back on your fake, take the jumper, or if he is moving forward, catch him off balance and drive past him. You have him in both cases. Always be aware of the position of the defensive player's feet. With practice, you will eventually automatically react and as a result often get open for a good shot. Either a free pass to the basket, fire a drive, or an open jump shot. For those who put their maximum effort into mastering these techniques, you can be sure of becoming a dangerous offensive weapon like the guy pictured here. Today there is a lot of dribbling between the legs and behind the back. Here is a particular move I believe can be very useful. The only suggestion I have is to be sure to practice this technique going right as well as left. As soon as you get that foot planted and you lean, you're going to push the ball to the side over here. Now, when you push the basketball over here, there's two different ways you can do it. You can either do it more as kind of a rolling it up, or you can do it more as a palm dribble. Now, a lot of coaches say you have to do it just the palm dribble way. I disagree. Because if you can push it out further, you can get you know, more momentum going and move quicker in this direction. If you do a palm dribble, now you're kind of stationary and it takes you a little while to get moving again. The reason a lot of coaches don't like you doing the when you kind of push it out more is for the fact that the basketball, if you don't stay tight with it with your body and move with it quick enough, the ball gets kind of out far here and the defender can hit it. So you just want to make sure when you're doing this that you keep your body moving quickly enough to stay in front of the basketball. 
If I push it out and keep my body here, the defender can't get to the basketball. So that's the between the legs, behind the back move. Great move you do when you're on the move, defender close to you, or once again, you do it stationary. Great move to get past your defender though. It was a pleasure for yours truly to author this tutorial on the move. Pursue it with diligence and you will be rewarded. Jim Carlston.